afternoon, everyone. Thanks for watching News 3 Now, live at 4. State lawmakers have just passed a state-level coronavirus response bill. News 3 Now political reporter Amy Reed is at the state capitol where the state assembly just passed the bill. All but two representatives voted yes on this bill, which has more than 50 provisions. It tackles subjects from health care to education to the economy. Now, if this passes the Senate tomorrow and the governor signs it, it will waive the one week waiting period for unemployment benefits effective March 12th and running through February of next year. The bill also removes requirements for testing for school districts and requires that tests for coronavirus be covered with no co-payments or co-insurance. This vote today took a while with all the accommodations for a partially virtual session, but assembly leaders struck a note of cooperation and hope when they addressed the room. While our politics are dysfunctional and at times may be broken, the public is looking to elected officials uh, to lead. To those who worry about the foundations of our republic, I say keep the faith. We will return to normal. We will get through this. The Senate is scheduled to take up this bill tomorrow morning. Assuming it passes, it will then head to the governor's desk. Amy Reed, live at the state capitol for us. Thank you, Amy. Turnout for last week's spring election was the highest it's been since 2016 and the third highest in spring elections in more than a decade. The commission's unofficial turnout was 34% for the April 7th election, about seven percentage points higher than the turnout of the spring 2019 election. The 2017 spring election and the 2008 spring election were both dual party presidential preference primaries. The turnout coincided with record absentee voting where one 1.1 million absentee ballots were cast statewide as people practiced social distancing. Democrats are uniting behind the presumptive nominee Joe Biden in his bid for the presidency. Two-term President Barack Obama broke his silence in the 2020 election, endorsing his former VP Joe Biden for the top White House job. Obama remained out of the fray as the Democratic primary process played out. But in a 12-minute message, he said now is the time for the party to unite and commended Biden's former rival, Senator Bernie Sanders. The energy and enthusiasm he inspired, especially in young people, will be critical in moving America in a direction of progress and hope. It's like now, he just made me. Uh, Obama and Biden worked side by side in the White House for eight years, and what began as a political partnership developed into a close friendship. Both men even poked fun at their so-called bromance in a video skit. And as one of his final acts in office, Obama awarded Biden the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In a tweet, Biden thanked Obama for the endorsement, saying, we're going to build on the progress we made together and there's no one I'd rather have standing by my side. After winning re-election to the Madison School Board yesterday, Nikki Vandermeulen is announcing she's running for the state assembly. If elected, she would be the first openly autistic legislature in the country. Vandermeulen is running for the seat left vacant by Democrat Representative Chris Taylor, who announced last month that she would not seek re-election. 18-year-old Max Prestigiacomo, a UW-Madison freshman student, will now serve on the Madison Common Council after being elected to the the district seat eight district eight seat last night he says that makes him the youngest elected official in the country and he hopes to inspire other young people to stand up and lead their communities our release from his campaign says he hopes to be the most progressive alder at the table he ran unopposed for the seat Although the number of coronavirus cases continue to rise, now topping 3,500, we are hearing some good news from health officials today. Our Amanda Quintana is here with the details. The big message from DHS officials today is safer at home is working. Practicing social distancing is beginning to flatten the curve. Today they released this graph showing Wisconsin was projected to have 22,000 infections by April 8th, resulting in between 440 and 1,500 deaths. But as you can see, the safer at home order has significantly decreased those numbers. There are currently more than 3,500 cases in the state. 172 people have died from complications of the virus, including the first deaths 
reported in Dodge and Adams counties and the fourth deaths in Rock and Sock counties. But some more good news here. Back in early March, the number of infections were doubling every 3.4 days. Now over the past two weeks, it's doubling about every 12 days. It is good news, Amanda. Thank you. More than a thousand Americans died of coronavirus Monday, bringing the nation's death toll to more than 23,000. But in New York, the nation's outbreak epicenter, the governor says the number of cases has plateaued and the path to normalcy can begin. Healthcare workers applauded as 33-year-old coronavirus patient Maria Mendez was discharged from Mount Sinai Morningside Hospital Monday in Manhattan. She'd been on a ventilator for 10 days. Hospitalizations over the last three days have gone down in New York. Swabs used for testing across the country remain in short supply, but today, New York City's mayor announced a firm in Indiana will be able to provide the city with 50,000 test kits every week, and another 50,000 per week will come from New York City manufacturers. The amount of testing we're going to need, the amount of testing that's going to be needed all over the country is vast. Nursing homes continue to get hit hard. One nursing home in Yolo, California, near Sacramento, reported 35 cases, including 23 patients. Back in New York, workers at a Manhattan church wore masks and gloves as they handed out food to the hungry. The line was around the corner. President Trump listened to stories from COVID-19 survivors as he considers issuing new recommendations to reopen the country. But some state governors say that reopening won't happen without them. Skylar Henry is at the White House with more. Uh, we've made a lot of progress. To President Trump met with people who've recovered from the coronavirus at the White House. I was afraid for my life. We were stuck there. It was like we were on a, pet a floating Petri dish. I think the most frustrating part, honestly, was trying to get a test. The president is expected to announce a new team of experts as soon as today, tasked with helping him come up with guidelines to reopen parts of the country. There's a debate over what authority you have to order the country reopened. Uh, what authority do you well, have? Well, I have the ultimate authority. We don't have a king, we have a president. President Trump's claim of authority received pushback from some governors, including New York's Andrew Cuomo. The president responded on Twitter, accusing Democratic governors of mutiny. This is no time for politics. And it is no time to fight. The president also slammed congressional Democrats on Twitter, demanding they replenish the Paycheck Protection Program now. The program, the PPP, is going to be out by this week, maybe by Thursday or Friday. So we could use the 250 to complete that program. Democrats say they will not budge from their push to include more money for states and hospitals, on top of the request for an additional $250 billion for the popular small business loan program. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell issued a statement saying there is no time to insist on sweeping renegotiations or ultimatums. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Both the House and Senate say they will not return to Washington before May 4th. Meanwhile, the Treasury Department says by the end of the week, more than 80 million eligible Americans will receive direct stimulus pay payments by direct deposits to their bank accounts. Sailors on board the USS Harry S. Truman and its support ships are not headed home as planned. The carrier strike group has finished a month-long deployment in the Middle East, but the Navy decided to keep the ships at sea for a few more weeks to protect crew members from getting the coronavirus. South Korea is sending 600,000 coronavirus test kits to the U.S. Officials there say President Trump requested the test during a phone call to the South Korean president in late March. And a retired Florida couple is lending a helping hand to a struggling family. She needed help, and you could tell by looking at her. After seeing a TV report about a mother of four who lost her waitressing job, John and Kay Curtis gave their government stimulus money to Jessica White. White says, thank God there are people like that. Devastating storms are now blamed for at least 33 deaths across the South. The spring storms were unrelenting in their march across the region, literally uprooting some communities here in South Carolina. Ten-year-old Charity Woods was trapped by a tree that crashed into her room as she slept. Her father struggled to get her free. I don't understand how she got, how we got out of there. Governors in several affected states are concerned about recovering from these storms amid the coronavirus pandemic. In Georgia, 
Four, more than 400 people have died from the coronavirus, and tornadoes added to the death toll as they tore across the state, shredding buildings. Well, a somewhat sunny but cold day with flurries. Dana Fulton is in the backyard weather patio with more. Dana? Right now it is a little chilly, and I'm a pretty warm-blooded lady, and uh, it's cool outside. As we take a live look with our Edgewater sky cam, you can notice those darker clouds in spots. We've had moments of sun, and then moments with uh, quite some swirling flurries coming through. We're at 33 currently in Madison. It feels much colder than that when we factor in the wind chill. Looking at our Doppler track, it's been spotty flurries like this throughout most of the day. It's not leading to any accumulation, but there have been a few drops in some visibility. Now, as we head into the rest of the week, it's going to become mostly clear and cold again overnight. It'll be cold for Wednesday, but Thursday and Friday will be nice and dry and only chilly. So a step in the right direction. We'll be near normal for our temperatures this weekend, but the rest of the week, uh, aside from some flurry chances tomorrow, should be fairly quiet. We'll take a closer look at your 10 day in just a few minutes. Thank you, Dana. The economics of the pandemic appear to be pushing more Wisconsin farmers into bankruptcy. Court records show 36 farmers filed for Chapter 12 bankruptcy since the first of the year. In 2019, there were 57 similar filings for the entire year. Dairy farmers are already dealing with depressed milk prices before COVID-19 shut down restaurants, schools, and other markets for dairy products. Madison firefighters spent more than five hours putting out a fire started by an abandoned campfire. This happened a couple miles north of East Town Mall on Westerfield Lane yesterday morning. Crews found a large pile of vegetation and logs burning about a half mile into the woods. Officials say strong winds and the remote location of the fire made it hard to put out. About 1,200 feet of hose was used to reach the fire location. Firefighters could not identify who was responsible for this fire. Friends of State Street family staff members are looking for business owners who are willing to host hospitality tables. They'll keep the table supplied. All you need to do is to be willing to have the table on your property. The group set up its first table on West Washington Avenue with water and snacks at an unmanned table so people experiencing homelessness can have access to supplies. If you own a business and are willing to host a table, you're asked to reach out to the Friends of State Street Family Facebook page. There's more to come at four. A lot of people are reluctant to go to the doctor's office these days, but you can visit a doctor safely. Consumer Reports tells us how when Live at Four continues. You're watching News 3 Now, Live at Four. Wells Asphalt Paving, expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. Wouldn't it be nice to not have to deal with your messy gutters anymore? Leave that nasty chore in the rear view mirror with a new Leaf Guard gutter system. Hi, I'm Andrew Larson, owner of Larson Home Services. My team would love to show you how Leaf Guard's patented design keeps leaves and debris out so you can give up cleaning your gutters forever. And now is the best time to get Leaf Guard. Order now and get free installation labor, free financing for 12 months, and a $100 Visa gift card with your purchase. Call now to set up a free estimate. Through all the world events since 1936, Culligan Water has continued to provide better, safer water with our filtration systems for homes and businesses. These days, as a designated essential business, Culligan's water professionals are standing by ready to help. Where can a healthier heart lead you? For people with heart failure taking Entresto, it may lead to a world of possibilities. Entresto is a heart failure medicine prescribed by most cardiologists. It was proven superior at helping people stay alive and out of the hospital. Heart failure can change the structure of your heart, so it may not work as well. Entresto helps improve your heart's ability to pump blood to the body. And with a healthier heart, there's no telling where life may take you. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or Alaskira, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or R. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto. Novartis thanks the heroic healthcare workers fighting COVID-19. This is our home. We've never seen it look quite like this. But there's no mistaking it. And it's our job to protect it. 
because the best people to fight for our communities are those within them. So if you've just bought a Volkswagen or were thinking of buying sometime soon, we're here to help with the community-driven promise. Ta-da! Did you know Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need? I should get a quote. Do it. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Wells Asphalt Paving, expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. Welcome back. A vaccine against coronavirus is still months away, but experts in Britain say a new smartphone app could help get life moving back to normal. Essentially, the app tracks where you go and remembers who you are close to by communicating through Bluetooth with other phones. If someone contracts the virus, the app alerts you if you are near them. Oxford University says it's a 21st century answer to stop the spread of the virus. You can reach uh, people and provide advice on quarantining and isolation and social distancing. And you can do that quick enough before they transmit to other people. Singapore has already rolled out a similar app to boost efforts to trace cases, but to be effective, widespread testing is needed. The app is voluntary, but critics are still worried about privacy. Others say the benefits should outweigh that concern. People are mad at Ticketmaster and follows what USA Today reports as an online change in wording of the company's refund policy amid a wave of coronavirus-related event cancellations and postponements. The paper cited an image of the Ticketmaster's website captured by the New York Times. It showed the previous wording, which stated that refunds, quote, are available if your event is postponed, rescheduled, or canceled. The wording has been changed to state that refunds, quote, are available if your event is canceled. Ticketmaster said in a statement to USA today that they're merely they merely changed the wording but that the policy on postponing events has remained consistent taco bell wants to remind everybody we're all in this fight together the fast food chain is giving away free Dorito Loco Tacos for the third week in a row. Taco Bell CEO started the Free Taco Tuesday back in March. It's a thank you for everything communities are doing to help. Stocks were higher on Wall Street as some states mull reopening plans. The Dow Industrials added 558 points, closing at 23,949. The NASDAQ up 323. The S&P 500 gained 84. While the world's attention is focused on the coronavirus pandemic, that doesn't mean adults and kids might not need doctors for other reasons. But during these times, is it even safe to see your doctor? Leah Lynchide and Consumer Reports reveal some high-tech ways to get an office, office visit without ever leaving your home. The coronavirus pandemic has changed the way we work, shop, and even see the doctor. In times like now, when with the coronavirus going on, if you want to see a physician and you don't want to go into a doctor's office where there might be, you know, there are more likely to be germs being spread around, you can accomplish a lot of stuff through, you know, through video chatting or even just emailing your physician now. Here are some ways to get health care at home. First, check with your primary care doctor. They may offer some form of telemedicine, including by video chat, phone, or email. You can also check with your insurance company. Many offer access to at-home health care options. There are also telemedicine options if you're uninsured. If you have no insurance at all, the walk-in clinics and urgent care clinics can be an affordable way to get care that you need on a given day. Your local urgent care or walk-in retail clinic may offer video consults with a health care provider quickly for a flat fee. CVS's Minute Clinics, for example, has video visits 24-7 for $59 in most states. And if you live in a major metropolitan area, a growing number of tech companies are moving into the health care space, offering virtual care. Carbon Health, for example, accepts many insurance plans and offers a virtual visit for $49. Telemedicine can be helpful in deciding whether you need to go to the doctor's office or to the ER. But it's important to remember that if you suspect an emergency, call 911 right away. For News 3 Now, this is Leah Lynchide. Stay well, folks. You too, Leah. Thank you. And you need something like contact lenses or a hearing aid? There are a number of companies offering online eye exams and hearing tests, though some healthcare providers say those tests are not a substitute for a comprehensive in-office exam. 
There's more to come at four, helping frontliners stay safe. We'll find out what the company Little Miss Sew It All is doing to help fill the mask shortage. That's coming up after Dana's first warn forecast. Ganser Company is proud to introduce 80 years and 80 minutes. We give you the skinny in 80 minutes to make an educated decision. Infinity Windows from Marvin offer a lifetime warranty. Remember, 80 years and 80 minutes from a local family business of four generations. Growing up, your memories may have included reading your favorite book before bed. For many, this is where the joy of reading starts. At Bella Domicile, we want every child to experience that joy. And it's Madison Reading Project's mission to make sure that all children have that same opportunity. Please donate to help us provide 40,000 books to children and help sustain our big red reading bus. For more information, visit madisonreadingproject.com. Brought to you by Bella Domicile and United Madison. They say life is all about making choices. Well, I didn't choose metastatic breast cancer. And you're back with number one best-selling author. Not the exact on type. Her book, The Ken in Cancer. Not the specific mutation. But I did pick hope. And also clarity. By knowing I have a treatment that goes right at it. Discover PICRAE, the first and only treatment that specifically targets pic 3 ca mutations in HR-positive, HER2-negative, MBC, which are common and linked to cancer growth. PICRAE is taken with full Vestrant after progression on hormone therapy and has been proven to help people with a pic 3 ca mutation live longer without disease progression. Do not take PICRAE if you've had a severe allergic reaction to it or to any of its ingredients. PICRAE can cause serious side effects, including severe allergic and skin reactions, high blood sugar levels and diarrhea that are common and can be severe, and lung problems known as pneumonitis. Tell your doctor right away if you have symptoms of severe allergic reactions or high blood sugar while taking PICRAE. Your doctor will monitor your blood sugar before you start and during treatment and may monitor more often if you have a history of type 2 diabetes. Before starting, tell your doctor if you have a history of diabetes, skin reactions, or pregnant, breastfeeding, or plan to become pregnant. Common side effects include rash, nausea, tiredness and weakness, decreased appetite, mouth sores, vomiting, weight loss, hair loss, and changes in certain blood tests. If you've progressed on hormone therapy, and have a PIC3CA mutation, ask your doctor about PICRAE. This is online learning. Today, it's more relevant than ever. This is you, a person looking for a lasting career. And this is Herzing University's Everywhere Classroom, where you can earn a degree in nursing, healthcare, business, and IT, anywhere, anytime. Take an online course free and get comfortable with online learning. That makes a degree from Herzing University more relevant than ever. I'm Learn more today. Hi, I'm Travis Ganser. Looking to update your bath, shower, or your entire bathroom? Ganser is the answer with Bath Creations by Ganser Company. Schedule your free in-home consultation or visit our beautiful showroom on the Beltline. A local family-owned business of four generations. Take a look at this. It's been a rough few weeks for Dan Mace. He tested positive for the COVID-19 virus and his wedding was canceled. Now fully recovered, he has an eight-step plan to get married. He quickly checks items off the list, including making a ring from guitar strings, guests made out of cardboard, and his friend as a virtual priest. After staying up all night working, he wakes up his fiance Gabby and tells her the plan. The happy couple then hold an amazing wedding ceremony in their very own backyard. Wow. It's wow, something. Talk I love about, it. I mean, determination right there. <laughs> he is a very clever man. and She's a lucky woman. I, I think. think it's very cute. All right, that snows this afternoon. A lot of flurries, yeah. <laughs> Pretty some hard at times. It looks like they're driving around in a bit of a snow globe right now. It really picked up there for a little bit. Visibility dropping for a few areas. And we are going to continue to see some light flurries pass through. Some areas, I guess, not so light flurries over the next few hours. Here's a live look downtown right now. We do have cloud coverage along with this. Some areas also seen a little bit of sunshine. We'll take a closer look at your forecast right after the break. Now. A WISC TV editorial with editorial director Neil Heinen. I've always admired the respect communities of color show their elders. I like the idea and the sound of community elders. Well, this is a critical time for all of us to be thinking about our older neighbors. This kind of reminder is typically appropriate during severe weather. But during this pandemic, when well, we've been forced to focus on our own basic needs, the needs of our seniors can be overlooked. 
We were reminded of the importance of this when a neighbor stopped us on our afternoon walk to talk about a 90-year-old woman with no family living just down the block. She had been calling the woman to see if she could help. The 90-year-old first wanted help getting an absentee ballot, which touched us, but the real need was interpersonal contact, which our neighbor Pam was compassionately providing. Yes, it's another thing to add to our pandemic response list, but we can do it. Remember the elderly among us as we're helping each other. the responsible one so much like me always taking care of everyone else but this this wasn't your responsibility i already took care of the arrangements the ryan's made it so easy i didn't want you to worry about a thing it's my last gift to you my lovely daughter Weekly Ozempic is helping many people with type 2 diabetes like James lower their blood sugar. A majority of adults who took Ozempic reached an A1C under 7 and maintained it. Here's your A1C. Oh, my A1C is under 7. And you may lose weight. Adults who took Ozempic lost on average up to 12 pounds. I lost almost 12 pounds. Oh. For those also with known heart disease, Ozempic lowers the risk of major cardiovascular events such as heart attack, stroke, or death. It lowers the risk. Oh. And I only have to take it once a week. Oh. oh, oh, oh Ozempic. Ozempic is not for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not share needles or pens. Don't reuse needles. Do not take Ozempic if you have a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer, multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, or if you are allergic to Ozempic. Stop taking Ozempic and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, itching, rash, or trouble breathing. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your doctor if you have diabetic retinopathy or vision changes. Taking Ozempic with a sulfonylurea or insulin may increase low blood sugar risk. Common side effects are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain and constipation. Some side effects can lead to dehydration, which may worsen kidney problems. Once weekly Ozempic is helping me reach my blood sugar goal. You may pay as little as $25 per prescription. Ask your healthcare provider today about once weekly Ozempic. First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. So it is a little windy outside right now along with the flurries and on and off sunshine that we're getting. Wind speeds have been picking up in the upper teens, but our wind gusts are still in the mid 20s. Here's a look at right now. It's coming from the west, uh, anywhere from the mid to upper 20s, really for most of the area. So if you are stepping outside, you're going to notice the snow. You're going to notice the wind. Also, that wind's part of the reason why some areas have kind of looked like the inside of a snow globe today. We've had on and off flurries, some heavier flurries at times for some areas. It really is just speckles throughout southern Wisconsin, and the cutoff line really is just south of the state line. They're not seeing anything for most of northern Illinois and into central Illinois. We just are seeing all that snow come down. It's not leading to any accumulation, but it is pulling back on our visibility a little bit for some areas where they're seeing the heavier snowfall. But again, it's April. That's what we get to deal with right now. This is all as a little trough is swinging through Wisconsin. Uh, again, so the state is seeing these light flurries pass through, not so much to our south and uh, nothing really expected off to the west. So once this flurry chance passes through over the next few hours, overnight our skies are steadily going to become mostly clear and we'll have a slight chance for some flurries tomorrow but the bulk of this really sliding through right now so we're variably cloudy some folks seeing mostly sunny skies and then other folks seeing mostly cloudy skies with flurries currently it's a little mixed bag throughout the area again heading into tomorrow morning we will become mostly clear so we'll have sunshine to start off the day in the afternoon the clouds build back in yet again and all those uh, clouds will get squeezed out a little bit of the moisture so we will have a slight chance for some flurries developing uh, later in the
in the afternoon. Thursday plan on a lot of sunshine, partly sunny skies building in. Temperature wise will increase a little bit on Thursday. We'll add on a few more degrees. The same goes into Friday and that just means by the weekend we'll finally be closer to average. Wind speeds heading into Wednesday will also drop back down to the single digits. Enough that uh, we might notice a little bit of a wind chill or breeze coming from the northwest but not nearly like what we've had for today and yesterday. It's starting to become just a little likely we could trend above average and our six to 10 day outlook for precipitation. Our temperature trend though, that is still continuing to pull further east, that colder air moving east. That's some good news for us. It would be nice if we could trend a little up with our temperatures or see, see a likely jump uh, for us. Tomorrow, high temperatures will be in the upper 30s. Yet again, variably cloudy skies. It's gonna be cold outside. Could see some light snow showers and flurries coming on through. Upper 30s on Wednesday, with partly sunny skies for Thursday and Friday, and again, adding a few more degrees on for each day. Mid 40s on Thursday, upper 40s on Friday, and by the weekend, we're close to average. Saturday and Sunday will be in the upper 50s. Partly sunny skies on Saturday, variably cloudy skies on Sunday, with a slight chance for some showers for the second half of the weekend. Next week, it does seem likely we're going to stay pretty quiet for most of the week. There is going to be a chance for some isolated showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday, but uh, otherwise, we're really going to get a lot of sunshine, and we're also going to finally be back into the 60s and see overnight lows creep back up as well, because these overnight lows in the 20s have been... Uh, just a little cold outside to start the day off, even with some sun early on. So spring returns next week. Spring returns, those nice temperatures creeping back in. Yes. All right, Dana, thank you. Mm -hmm. Healthcare workers in parts of the country are still struggling to get their hands on masks and other protective equipment. Nancy Chen shows us one small business that has adapted during the COVID-19 crisis and is helping healthcare workers and others in the process. We know how to sew, so we're going to sew. Melissa Stacy Thomas owns Little Miss Sew It All in Maynardville, New York. When the COVID-19 outbreak hit, she was forced to close her sewing studio and send her students home. But then she received a new mission. Now we got requests from our mothers who are healthcare providers to start making masks that are CDC compliant. Melissa and her small team switched gears and began sewing masks using the 15,000 yards of cotton fabric in her shop. We have a cutting station, a pinning station, two young ladies are sewing, and then we have someone who is pressing the pleats in. One of their first recipients, the urgent care, just a few doors down. Little Miss Sew It All has fulfilled requests for masks and caps from local hospitals, primary care centers, group homes and nursing homes, and shipped as far as Florida and Colorado. Donations on the shop's website and social media pages help support the effort. I have my mask. Marcy Gower in Colorado initially made a donation and then purchased the washable masks for herself and her family members. I'm immunocompromised, so I wish to wear a mask when I leave my home. It's a level of comfort we have. Little Miss Sew It All stopped counting once they surpassed the 1,000 mask mark. Melissa says the long hours and hard work are worth it. It's just been uplifting to be able to, to have something to do and to have a purpose. She says they'll keep sewing as long as the fabric and the need are there. Nancy Chin, CBS News, New York. The sewing team practices social distancing in the shop and they stop every couple of hours to wipe down their workstations. I think it's the best name for a company I've ever heard of. Little Miss Sew It All. That's a really good one. <laughs> Doing some good work. Well said. All right, there's more to come at four. Coming up later, we'll talk with political expert Charles Franklin about the results of the spring election. And then coming up at five, we'll show how the coronavirus pandemic is changing the way people use online dating apps. That story tonight at five. Choosing the right Medicare plan is simple, right? Except that there are a lot of choices from a lot of companies. Avoid the confusion and the junk mail. Come to Informed Choice Insurance Agency. We know Medicare. And we offer many of Wisconsin's popular plans. There's no cost and no obligation to come discuss your Medicare options with the experienced team at Informed Choice. Call us today. <laughs> Five years ago, I had psoriasis everywhere. My skin hurt, I felt gross. But then I started Cosentix, and I haven't really had to think about it. Real people with psoriasis look and feel better with Cosentix. Don't use
news if you're allergic to Gosentix. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections and lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms. If your inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop or worsen, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to, serious allergic reactions may occur. Ask your dermatologist about Cosentix. To our pick and save associates, for the long hours and late nights, for the miles traveled and the shelves restocked, for making a difference in our customers' lives, for doing so much more than your job. Everyone at the Kroger family of brands and our customers say thank you. In a time when daily life feels a bit uncertain, your hard work is keeping America fed. Pick and save, fresh for everyone. The time is right to do something nice for your home. Why not replace your gutters with LeafGuard, the only gutter system that has earned the good housekeeping seal of approval. Hi, I'm Andrew Larson, owner of Larson Home Services. LeafGuard's patented one-piece seamless design keeps leaves and debris out, which means no more clogs. Guaranteed. LeafGuard carries a lifetime warranty, so your home's foundation will be protected forever. And our customers couldn't be happier. They're the best. I don't have to worry about the, the gutters getting clogged up with the seeds, the branches, the, the dirt, the, the roof sheddings, and it's just one less worry for me. And right now, save big on your new LeafGuard brand gutter system and get some incredible extras. Order now and get free installation labor, free financing for 12 months, and call before this program is over and get a $100 Visa gift card with your new LeafGuard gutter system. Call now to schedule your free estimate. Southern Wisconsin is our community. Our home. Our home. Our home. And in this time of uncertainty, we need to stand together while staying apart. While staying apart. Social distancing. Social distancing for my family. For my parents. I'm social distancing for my 96-year-old mother. I'm social distancing for my boys. We're in this together. 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 We're all in this together, and we will get through this together. Tonight at 5, online dating apps are seeing an increase in people using their services, how they are adapting to an uptick in users. That's at 5. Tomorrow will be another cold day with a chance of afternoon flurries. Temperatures will slowly start to head back up for the rest of the week. My news for now, first horn forecast at 5. And ahead at 6, an update from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism about what it'll take for them to bounce back from the coronavirus pandemic. That's tonight on News 3 Now at 6. As we continue to go through this pandemic, everyone seems to be looking for new ways to deal with it. Earlier today, I talked with UW Distinguished Psychologist Shailen Mergain about ways to cope. Many people find that they're struggling with increased anxiety and fear and overwhelm and even depression. And it's really essential that we instill coping strategies to really help us day to day manage this crisis to really be the calm in the storm. What kinds of things are you talking about? Well, the first thing that really makes us vulnerable to negative emotions is that we're missing out on those average daily interactions with people. When we simply have chit chat with the person at the grocery store or we're engaging in small talk with coworkers, we actually get a micro boost in our mood. Those things, those small daily interactions leave a pep in our step and we're missing out on those and it can make us start to feel kind of sluggish and lose motivation and even feel a little bit of a fatigue. So a way to counteract that is with the first skill, which is simply focus on little small goals, little small achievements that you can really prioritize during your day. When we work towards a small goal, we have that sense of a small accomplishment or achievement that gives us a similar micro boost. It could be something like a friend of mine is working on a thousand piece puzzle and photographing her weekly uh, progress with it. I personally, this past weekend over Easter, baked bread for the first time with my mother. It's tough to stay, stay positive through all of this. It is, and those negative emotions can really hook us, and often that's where we start to linger. But equally, the second practice is to really focus on purpose and positivity so we can have um, better emotional well-being. The positive exists alongside the negative. There, it's always there, but our brain tends to have that negativity bias of focusing on what's wrong, the doom and gloom. Instead, really start to cultivate and focus on that sense of positivity. And so if we can think about what would create a sense of meaning, what is one thing 
that I can do to help somebody? What is one little effort that I can make that can create some good in the world? What is one way I can care for my family or myself? Maybe it's making a, a meal. Maybe it's wishing a friend uh, well. Um, so again, when we have that sense of purpose, that's helpful. And that is one of the things that really boosts that positivity, positive emotions. Anything we can do for laughter, go out in nature to feel that sense of awe, connection with the, the natural world. And you want to talk about something called emotional freedom technique. <laughs> Yes, it's a powerful technique that I personally use. When you find your brain is locked into negative thinking or that negative emotion is really sticky, you can use emotional freedom technique or EFT for short. It's a simple practice based on Chinese medicine using the meridians in your body. The first thing you do is just think about what's upsetting. You can rate it from zero to 10. That's the second step. The third step is just to come up with a simple phrase that acknowledges a difficulty and also acknowledges acceptance and self-love. And we find when we pair the two with a simple phrase, like even though I'm feeling anxious about COVID-19, I accept myself totally and completely. So that kind of phrase we generate. And then we simple, simply do a tapping practice. We can use two fingers, the forefinger and middle finger, and you're gonna tap like you're tapping a drum or you're tapping the table. And then you simply tap different points while saying that phrase, such as, even though you start at the top of the head, even though I'm feeling anxious, I accept myself totally and completely top of the head, then by the eyebrows, even though I'm feeling scared about finances, I love and accept myself. Then you go to the temples, even though I'm feeling totally overwhelmed, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. And you have a video then, on Facebook that explains all of this. I do, then a whole a protocol people can use to manage stress during COVID-19. It's on my professional page, Dr. Shyla Mergain. And at the last step is just to re-rate your level of anxiety. And what this does is it unlocks that focus on negativity and you start to get better balance in mind and body. And it really taps into the body's innate capacity to self-regulate and heal. And many people find that they're calmer. If you're not, just simply do the sequence again. And it's one of the things that can be a real tool um, in your toolbox to help you cope during this challenging time. Great advice as always, Shiloh. Stay well. We'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you. Stay well to all the viewers and yourself as well, Mark. Thank you, Shiloh. Still to come at four, last week's election was one for the record books. We'll get reaction on the days leading up to the election and the results from political expert Charles Franklin when Live at 4 continues. At Harker Heating and Cooling, you can save a whole bunch of money when you buy an air conditioner. You know what's even better? Saving even more money when you purchase an air conditioner and a furnace at the same time. Harker Heating and Cooling. When looking for a TV and internet provider, we know you have a choice. This is Jessica. She still has satellite TV. Well, I get tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD, and we love Spectrum's 24-hour local news channel. Plus, we get exclusive access to premium original content with Spectrum Originals. I don't have that. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-976-4499. Spectrum Internet starts at 200 megabits with no data caps and a free modem. We have to get internet from another company and it isn't nearly as fast. Spectrum Internet, $44.99 a month. I'd switch, but I'm stuck in a contract and would have to pay up to $480 to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts and they'll pay up to $500 to help you out of yours. That's it. I'm switching to Spectrum. Get Spectrum TV and internet from $44.99 a month each. Call 833-976-4499. Coming together makes us stronger, and Ford is built to lend a hand. Contact your Ford dealer, an essential part of your community, to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Find out more at Ford.com. Right now, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months, plus three months deferred payments on select 2020 Ford models. I'm not used to taking care of things on my own. My wife, my sweetheart, took care of me for 46 years, and I've loved every moment. When the doctor gave her six months, all she wanted was to spend it at home with me. 
Now it's my turn to take care of her. I know a Grace will help me care for the one I've loved my whole life. A Grace Hospice and Palliative Care. Just call. A Grace will help. Surgenians is proud our roots have grown along with you in this community. We have floored thousands of area homes, businesses, and iconic Madison buildings since we first opened our doors in 1930. Surgenians Landfill Free Guarantee has kept millions of pounds of used flooring out of landfills, ensuring our Madison roots can grow stronger for generations to come. Local. Sustainable. Surgenians. Todd Drive at the Beltline. At Harker Heating and Cooling, you can save a whole bunch of money when you buy an air conditioner. You know what's even better? Saving even more money when you purchase an air conditioner and a furnace at the same time. Harker Heating and Cooling. We have an update on 93-year-old Olive Veronese's quest for beer. Well, yesterday we told you that Olive loves a beer a night, and she was running low. She posted a sign at her house saying, I want more beer. Well, she got more beer. Representatives from Molson Coors Beer Company found out about Olive's dilemma, and they showed up at her place with 10 <laughs> cases of Coors Light. <laughs> After the delivery, Olive wrote a new sign that said, I got more beer. Olive loves her beer. Wow. <laughs> wow. She's going to be supplied for quite some time, Ho I would hope. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully it'll last right. a while. Well, <laughs> well, some political experts are calling the justice-elect Jill Karofsky's win over Justice Daniel Kelly an upset. Joining us now is political expert and director of the Marquette Law School poll, Charles Franklin. Charles, good to see you. Good to be back. A lot of people thought this election shouldn't have even taken place. Well, there certainly was, especially at the last minute, that last week, a growing sentiment that it should have been moved. I think in retrospect, we found that we had nearly record-breaking turnout uh, with 71% of the ballots cast absentee. This was the second highest vote for a Supreme Court race since 2000, uh, whether there was a presidential primary or not. Now, we'll never know what the turnout might have been if it had been a normal election or if the efforts had been made sooner and stronger to increase absentee voting. But I think you'd have to say that we got through the election with a turnout above uh, last year's Supreme Court race by over 300,000 more votes. Charles, why are people, some people calling this an upset? Well, I think any time you defeat an incumbent Supreme Court justice, that's a very rare outcome. This is only the second time that's happened uh, in 30 or more, maybe 40 more years. So it, it just doesn't happen very often. Uh, it is true going into this race that uh, the Democratic primary on the same day as the Supreme Court race was believed to favor Democrats, and that's been a fact for months and months and months. But we ended up with a Democratic primary that was a lot less hard fought, much more low key uh, because of the epidemic without campaign events, without advertising and so on. So I think that was definitely an assist to Karofsky, but the overall turnout was only a little bit higher than the trend we've seen in court races. So give a little credit to that Democratic primary turnout, but overall, um, We've seen court races become more partisan, more hard fought, and more people turning out in them over the last four or five years. Most statewide races in the past few cycles have been pretty close. This one was not. Uh, no, it, it was a pretty solid win for her. Uh, almost as strong a win as uh, Judge Dallet won a couple of years ago, uh, and certainly different from the 6,000 vote win for Judge Hagedorn, who won the Supreme Court race a year ago. Um, but in this turnout element, we've seen the turnout in court races go from a little over 800,000 to about a million. Last year it was 1.2 million. This year it was 1.5 million. So there's been a steady increase in concern about the court races, and that maybe has also generally made them more competitive. But this year broke strongly for Karofsky. Does her win and considered um, 
considering that it was happening during this pandemic, does this kind of change on any like projection or a trajectory or something for November that you I, might be seeing a little bit in the periphery? Yeah, I, I don't think that the race itself has much effect. I think surely how the epidemic develops and how the economy develops is gonna play a much bigger role uh, in shaping what November looks like. Uh, the one thing I would say is that even on the fly in the midst of chaos, voters overwhelmingly found ways to request, receive, and return their absentee ballots. With advanced planning, you might expect that to work even better, but we will have double the turnout in November that we did yesterday. So that really does need some planning, some preparation, and maybe most especially voters who are able to anticipate what the rules of the election will be instead of waiting until literally the night before for Supreme Court decisions that affect that. There is some talk about making it an all mail in election. Uh, that is conceivable. It takes almost surely uh, an agreement between the governor and the legislature to do something like that. I think that the rules we have in place still place a burden on voters to themselves request the ballots, receive them, fill them out, send them back. And that is not perfect. And we saw um, about 200,000 ballots were sent out but not returned. Now, a lot of that happens in normal circumstances. Not everybody that asked for one does send it back. But we also saw the failures that can happen with ballots not received, ballots uh, returned but not in time and so on. So it is a more complicated process. Other states like Colorado and Washington state that vote all by mail do this very effectively and they send the ballots directly to you without you requesting them. But that has taken them multiple years to plan for and transition to. We don't have that much time. If we're going to do it, we need to start doing it soon. And if we're not going to do it, Voters need to become fully informed about what they need to do and try to instigate the process earlier and not wait for the deadline when everything gets crunched up and maybe ballots don't arrive or returned in time. Let's hope things are a lot smoother right. in November. Yes. Charles? Charles, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Take care. We'll be right back with a final check of your forecast. For your role player. new dwellings. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Take advantage of exceptional financing at your local Cub Cadet dealer today. To find the dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home or the blistering heat of summer without power, then having to make the tough choice between eating or meeting other basic survival needs. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision with no place else to turn, including those who are now unemployed due to the COVID-19 crisis. Keep a neighbor in crisis safely in their home during these difficult times by supporting and donating to the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund today. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection remains open to serve our customers and communities during these times of uncertainty. During Safer at Home, we've got you covered for all your plumbing service needs. Call us for help. We are here for you. For the safety of our customers, we have temporarily closed our showroom, but we are still scheduling our award-winning in-home design visits, so reserve your spot today. Dwellings, Madison's best-kept $150 secret. Wednesday morning, Hattie's helping us look forward to a little bit of a warm-up at the end of the week. And we'll help you avoid any extra trips to the store by telling you which foods last the longest. Wake up with us starting at 4.30 tomorrow. 
For the latest coronavirus reports and breaking news, watch News 3 now and go to Channel 3000 to sign up for our daily email newsletter. Get the facts and tips to keep your family safe. News 3 now, your local coronavirus headquarters. Looking at our Doppler track right now, we have on and off flurries throughout the entire area. Kind of living like in a snow globe this evening. It's going to be cold overnight with skies becoming mostly clear by tomorrow morning. We will have a flurry chance tomorrow afternoon. Dry weather for Thursday and Friday and by the weekend temperatures will be back close to normal. Coming up tomorrow here on Live at 4, it's the end of an era at M. Mocha. We'll talk with its retiring longtime director. And Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company will answer your plant and garden questions live. We'll be right back.